What about Vietnam? A podcast with Gary Newsom. The series where Gary talks with travelers about their experiences and adventures. Find out more about Vietnam from the people who have actually been there. What about Vietnam? Whether it's adventure, exploring the culture and cuisine, shopping, or just soaking up the sun. Let Carrie and her travelers pave the way for a magical holiday in Vietnam. What about Vietnam? Sing Chow and welcome to What About Vietnam? Today we take a deep dive, literally, into Vietnam with my guest, Jeremy Steen. Jeremy is an English guy who came to Vietnam about 25 years ago and kind of never left. He fell in love with Vietnam and set up originally in Nha Trang. He is a English-trained paddy course director And in his 25 years in Vietnam, he has set up over over five dive centres and trained hundreds um, of people in the skill of diving. He has a lot to offer people who would uh, consider coming to Vietnam as um, a destination to do diving, to learn diving, to, uh, to have diving as part of your holiday experience because, as he says, you know, you can add to a diving holiday so many other things because just of what Vietnam has to offer. He has some tremendous information about what you're going to see in species under the water, coral, uh, and just, you know, best times of the year. Uh, it's an it's a really informative session today, uh, and I think for anyone who maybe hasn't even thought about coming to Vietnam um, to dive, you're really going to be surprised at just what there is on offer. Please welcome Jeremy to the program. It's great to be here. Now, Jeremy, uh, tell us just how did diving start as a sport in Vietnam? Talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. Well, 25 years ago, I was living in Saudi Arabia and decided to take a two-week holiday trip to Vietnam. Flying into Nha Trang in central Vietnam reminded me of flying into Cairns when I dived there a few years earlier. In Nha Trang in Vietnam, there was no organized diving, but Nha Trang did have a pretty laid back hut on the beach offering some infrequent boat diving. I convinced them to take me diving every day and just loved it. And at the end of the two weeks, I decided not to return to Saudi and actually took over the beach hut. So I upgraded then and became the first paddy dive center in Vietnam. From there, I just continued exploring the rest of the country underwater and opened five other centers over the years. So now when it's rainy season in one part of the country, there's always somewhere else in the country with great diving conditions. Okay, then. Uh, I mean, Nha Trang's a nice place to start uh, from what I remember of my visits to Nha Trang about three or four years ago. So a very pretty spot. Yeah, absolutely, yes, yeah. Okay, so you said that um, there's several other places around the country. I mean, my experience is pretty limited as far as diving is concerned. Uh, My experience is to Hoi An and maybe going out to the Cham Islands, that's as far as it extends. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about the expansiveness of the diving, like the marine life that you can expect to to see? Because I would think that would be of particular interest to a diver. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I mean, Vietnam diving will never compete with your Great Barrier Reef or places like Sivadan or the Galapagos. What it does offer is some safe and fun diving in an amazing country. I've always promoted Vietnam as not just about the diving, but a complete cultural experience. I mean, for example, in Nha Trang, as you mentioned, uh, the city, we've got over 350 different species of corals there. That's actually more species than found on the barrier reef itself. However, we don't regularly have the big pelagics, 
but the marine life which abound on coral reefs here are awesome. The macro marine life here is excellent. So from frogfish to sea moths, ghost pipefish, gurnard lionfish, snake eels, as well as the usual suspects like cuttlefish, octopus, mantis shrimps, and of course, lots of Nemo's. Nudibranch lovers will be in paradise here. We've got hundreds and hundreds of species and still many un unrecorded. Okay. So for the uh, inexperienced diver, what, uh, what would you suggest there as far as best locations and would they be diving or would they be snorkeling to, to enjoy these dive sites or these locations? Oh, both, of course. So in between dives, if they, if they are diving, they can snorkel as well. But most of the sites throughout Vietnam are perfect for all level of divers and snorkelers. If we just briefly look at each destination, Nha Trang, as we've said, is the home of diving in Vietnam. All diving takes place on Hon Moon Island, which is a marine park we established 15 years ago. And there's about 10 different sites there. Those of you who've read about Vietnam or been to Vietnam will remember some of the iconic names like Moray Beach, Tiger Wall, Debbie's Beach, Madonna Rock. Electric Nose is probably the only site in Nha Trang which we recommend for advanced divers only. This is a pretty remote pinnacle with wall dives down to about 40 metres. But about two hours north of Natrang, you've got a remote eco-resort, which is called Whale Island. It's definitely far from the madding crowd and total relaxation. We've actually dropped a couple of small wooden wrecks in the bay, down at about 12, 14 metres. So the beach diving is really cool there as well. Hoi An, you mentioned, we've got Cham Island and the Sarans. It's pretty much in the middle of Vietnam and offers very similar diving to Nha Trang. Kong Dao Island is about 250 clicks south of Saigon. It's remote and still pretty much undiscovered and undeveloped. Still plenty of sites to explore. Actually, Kerry, last week we were diving there and at 30 metres we found a wreck. So lots of exploring still to do there to find out what it is, what it did, how long it's been there, but fascinating stuff. Finally, Fukuok Island, this is 350 kilometers west of Saigon. It's actually in the Gulf of Thailand, just off the Cambodian coastline, but still very much a Vietnamese island. It offers safe, easy diving. Yeah, and... Um... Just to, to go back on a couple of those places, Whale Island, was Whale Island originally only open to Vietnamese? There was originally, a that... yes. Um, I think that changed um, part of the fame of the place. Is, this is where Jacques Cousteau actually moored his boat and did some diving there <laughs> from the Calypso. But, um, yeah, initially it was very much a Vietnamese island for Vietnamese, but... That's very much changed now and over the years. It's probably 60% foreigners and 40% Vietnamese. So it's a nice cultural mix. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Kandaya, like my Vietnamese is shocking. I'm sure that's not even how you pronounce it. But um, be some really nice resorts or uh, beautiful hotels that are starting to spring up on Kandayo Island. So that makes for a nice... Um, break in the afternoon or after diving surely absolutely the um the, the the world famous hotel chain of six senses they put the first that's resort right. there that's the one back probably six seven years ago um pretty expensive but pretty remote pretty exclusive very nice um but it's a total mix of accommodation on the island you've got the, the six senses which is uh u.s dollars I and thousand Prize and thousand dollars a night, uh, but you still got the backpacker and glam packer places from twenty bucks a night, fifty bucks a night, hundred dollars a night. It, it's a good mix. Traditionally, Vietnam hasn't been highlighted as a destination for water sports, but it's certainly coming of age, don't you think? 
Yeah, indeed. Um, it's a shame because one of the first things I did when I moved to Vietnam 25 years ago was start traveling to all the world trade shows or the dive shows, putting up a big Vietnamese flag and talking about Vietnamese, Vietnam as a new destination. I must admit in, in the Americas, it did upset a few people having a big yellow and red flag there. But no, since then, we've had a lot of those people I've met at all these dive exhibitions around the world visit Vietnam and being very surprised and very happy. And for my listeners, I'm sure uh, there's a mix amongst them that are serious divers, that are, you know, kind of leisure divers, and then there would be the total novices that would consider coming to Vietnam and, and maybe using Vietnam as an opportunity to learn diving. Can you talk to, to us a little bit about that, about the opportunity to learn, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're the paddy flagship here in Vietnam and offer the complete range of paddy courses from the initial tri-dive and the open water course right up to dive master, instructor, staff instructor courses. The tri-dives can be done in one day, the open water course, three or four days, the advanced course, two days. And the dive master and IDC, that's the instructor course, take from two to three weeks. A popular option for the professional level courses like dive master and instructor is to take the courses as an internship and spend three to six months diving and learning. And all the paddy courses now have the uh, facility to learn online which means that you can complete the theory before coming here and that's, say, spending a day in the classroom while you're on holiday. Mm, sounds like a good idea. So yeah, they can do works. the online uh, part of it before they come yeah. and then you'll take them out after that when when they arrive here. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I've always thought diving was such a speciality and was it only for the, the the hearty and the fit swimmer? And uh, so I kind of never went there. Not that I'm not fit per se, but I always felt that it was for the adventurer that um, was prepared to to do that kind of thing. Talk, explain for us just the the person, the type of person that best suits diving. And and diving in the locations that they're in, that they're coming to in Vietnam. I guess where I'm coming from, Jeremy, with this is that I'm sure there's some sites around the world that would only be for your serious diehard diver, where maybe Vietnam offers sites that aren't going to be for the the diehard diver. They're more for a, a leisure diver or one that just wants to, you know, have a holiday, enjoy it, et cetera. And I'm trying to get that difference, if you know what I mean. Sure. Um, the leisure diver sums it up nicely. This can be the people who've made 10, 20 dives or a 1,000 dives plus and still enjoy the diving. Um, as I said, all of the sites are suitable for both ends, from the novice up to the professional diver. For example, we, we regularly get um, groups of photographers from the US, from Australia, who, as a group, there'll be eight or ten of them who will come armed with all their uh, photography equipment, and they've got a wish list of things they haven't seen but they want to be able to photograph. Um, they always leave with all of their lists ticked and a few more added which they didn't even know they wanted. So we, we can pretty much okay. cater for whatever people want. If people want shallow, safe, easy diving, we can do that. Some of the more adventurous dives, like I said, the electric nose in Nha Trang or the Three Kings in Whale Island, yeah, these are deeper, a little bit more adventurous, and therefore experience matters. But w whenever we take anyone diving, we always check how many dives they've made, when was their last dive, so that we can gauge what sort of experience they've got and we'll pick dive sites suitable for them. Oh, and that's a really good thing to know because I know myself, if I was going out, I'd really want to know that people knew my skill level 
and what I was capable of so that I could confidently go out there and know I was going to have a, a good time. It was going to be a, a good all-round experience. So that's good to know. Jeremy, talk to us a little bit about the safety side of things uh, as far as diving is concerned. Okay. Um, as I said, be, being the Paddy flagship Paddy have very strict guidelines and standards which must be followed, mainly the emphasis being safety of the student. Of course, safety of the staff also is one of my major concerns as well. All the staff are professionally trained. They know what they're doing. Um, I have a full team of senior Paddy instructors working with me. Also, over the 25 years, I've trained quite a few Vietnamese up to top instructor ratings. So everybody is aware of what they need to do at any given time, whether it's on the bus on the way to the harbour, whether it's getting from the harbour onto the boat or on the boat heading out to the dive sites. There, there are strict safety procedures in place. We like to take people diving, but it's also pretty important to bring them back as well. <laughs> Uh, kind of in the same condition that they left. Yeah, for yeah hopefully in a happier yeah. condition. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was I was thinking more about the uh, equipment level, the kind of boat experience, uh, because you know you look at some boats out there and you think, oh, would that would that get me out there very safely, and would that get me back? Mm, not sure about that. Yeah. Uh, so I know under the Paddy flagship, obviously, to be qualified to to do this, you'd have to tick all you know the main boxes. But maybe you can just speak to people or anecdotally about you know making sure that when they see that trip online, that they ask the right questions. For sure. For, certainly for the first couple of years when I was organising diving from my little laid-back beach hut on, uh, in, in the train, <laughs> the boats were pretty much we had to do with what we could get, which meant on some occasions there wasn't a suitable entry platform, so it was a back roll from a fairly high-sided, uh, high I suppose, fishing boat. However, over the years... With, with diving directly and indirectly being a multi-dollar, multi-million dollar uh, tourist industry, the boats now are made in Vietnam, still with the emphasis on looking like a fishing boat, um, but they are designed with dive safety in mind. So they all have dive platforms, they all have the ladders, they have cages around the uh, propellers, You've got first aid um, rooms on, on the boats. You've got toilets. You've got showers. They'll take about 25 to 30 customers at any one time, and that includes about 10 to 15 staff. We always make sure that when we're teaching or when we're guiding, we have pretty strict ratios of maximum of four dives in a group with their dive guide or with their instructor. Now, this is... Well, well within any international standards, but it's something I felt was right uh, 20 years ago, and I still feel it's right now. Let's err on the side of caution, eh? Who, who's diving these days? Traditionally, over the last 20, 25 years, um, uh, foreigners with, with very few Vietnamese. Um, 25 years ago, the clientele were mainly backpackers looking quite surprised that they'd found somewhere in Vietnam where they could go diving. Now, I would say 65, 70% of diving is all pre-booked online. And the ratios have changed quite dramatically. Um, I would say 75% would be Foreigners, that includes the resident expats here, with 20, 25% being made up of the Vietnamese divers. Now, part of this is down to us having trained uh, the Vietnamese to dive master level and instructors. So they've now opened their own dive centers. They now do their own promotion. And we all work fairly closely together on this. 
But certainly since um, COVID hit us, where we've not had the luxury of our 75, 80% of tourists coming in, we've developed quite successfully the expat market here and the Vietnamese market. So we can still offer diving to them. Uh, one of the centers I didn't mention we have, and that's actually a, a city center location in, in Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City. Now, obviously, it is landlocked apart from the river which runs through it, but we use it to teach classroom work for all paddy courses, and we have swimming pools here so we can teach people the basics of diving. Then, when they've got their weekend free, they can head up to Nha Trang or Phu Quoc or Condao or Whale Island and spend their two or three days finishing the course and getting certified. It's also a great excuse for the expats before they head off on their exotic holidays to the Barrier Reef or Sibadan. They can get in the pool here, spend a session, get refreshed, get comfortable with their skills again. Oh, well, that's fantastic. And, and Jeremy, talk to me about the, the cost to do these courses or to, to go diving. I mean, there is sometimes a, a label that Vietnam gets that, you know, everything in Vietnam is cheap, isn't quite right anymore, and I think you pay for what you get. But uh, tell us just a little bit about how it compares. I mean, if you, you do diving, I mean, you can't even rent a surfboard in the Maldives without it costing you a fortune fortune so you know if we could just do some comparisons for people so they can know you know whether it's affordable sure i i, I believe we offer value and safety for money um a great analogy i would use first of all is if you came to a third world asian country and wanted to do a parachute course would you really choose the cheapest option i don't think so <laughs> uh. So scuba diving, for certified divers, we charge 75 US for two fun dives, including equipment. Now, compared to the rest of Asia, I think that's excellent value for money. And yeah. the, the good thing is a lot of divers are realistic about safety because when they see some of these smaller local dive centers offering, dare I say, same, same, but different diving for half that price, they're not stupid. They realize that it's too cheap. Yeah, people don't want just cheap, as we've said a couple of times. They want to go out, dive, enjoy the experience, and come back in a better, better state than when they left. I mean, a paddy open water course uh, over four days will cost you around 400 US, and an instructor course will cost you around 1,200 um, US, pretty much in line with the rest of Asia. Um, but as I said, we've got these groups, maximum numbers in groups, which make the experience oh so more realistic, safe, comfortable. I mean, personally, I still hate going to places like Sivadan, where there's a young dive master and there's 25 people following him. Um, yeah, that, that's not right. So I, I tend to err on the side of caution and safety. Yeah, and I, I'll, they're my favourite words when it comes to things like that, and I'm sure it is for a lot of people listening. Talk to us a little bit, Jeremy, about the best time of the year uh, to come to Vietnam. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, the various sites around the country. I mean, Vietnam's that long, skinny dragon and, you know, top to bottom, is um, it, it, it is different as we go along. But maybe you could speak to some of those locations and give us the best time. In other words, if we want to go to Nha Trang, you know, when would be the best time? If we yeah, want to go absolutely. to Kandai, yeah, talk to us a little bit about the best times for, for each region. Okay, as you say, it's a long, skinny country. It's actually about 3,200 miles, 3,200 kilometres of coastline, and therefore, it does have different seasons. Now, trying Poi An Whale Island are best February to October for their diving and for the weather conditions. Now, trying is open and dives all year, but we're realistic if people are looking to book 
in the rainy or the quiet season, we'll advise them realistically what the conditions are, what the water temperature is, what the visibility is. And for a lot of people, if they're coming from Europe, then the conditions we're saying, well, you've only got a few metres visibility, that's luxury to them. They're, they're used to diving in zero visibility, where it's basically braille diving. You're diving and you're oh. in you only know by what you feel. Um, Condal is beautiful from March to September, and then Foucault comes into its own from September through to April. So, as I said earlier, 12 months of the year, you can dive throughout Vietnam. And what, one of the things we find with people coming to Vietnam, if they're spending a week, 10 days diving, then in one location, you're going to get a little bit bored with the options. I would always recommend a multi-destination holiday. A hop. Yeah. Nha Trang and Whale Island are the perfect combination. Nha Trang, Whale Island and Kong Dao, uh, sorry, um, Phuket. Yan, that works very well. Now, because of the rural location of Kong Dao and Phu Quoc, it can make the trip a little bit longer because you need to add in a couple of days' flights in between the islands to get to Nha Trang. But Nha Trang Whale Island is such a great combination because you can dive, two dives in the morning in Nha Trang, have lunch, hop onto our bus, which takes you two hours to get up to Whale Island. You can do an afternoon beach dive and a night dive in the same day. And then you stay there for a few days. And if you're really serious, you come back to Nha Trang and do a couple of dives again on the way back. Good to know those combinations because you're right, you could get bored uh, just sitting in one spot. But to connect uh, Nha Trang and Whale Island, that's really interesting. And uh, from what I understand also, in Nha Trang they've also developed, you know, kite surfing and uh, some other water sports uh, that you could add to your diving or your water sport kind of holiday. Is that yeah, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So if you're looking at kite surfing, jet skiing, that sort of stuff, um, it's all available from the beach. Um, there's one of these uh, in one of the islands, which is not close to where we dive. They, they've got regular uh, hydrofoils going across and you've got a big sort of fun park there with aquarium. Oh, yes. So I know you either love them or hate yeah. them, but tourists... Um, do flock there. In Nha Trang also, there's some really nice, uh, there's a really nice beach scene, isn't there? Like beach bars in really nice kind of casual, you know, like there's a, a there's a nice vibe there, I think, too, don't yeah, you think? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a great metropolis. It's a busy seaside city destination with some stunning bars and restaurants. Um, hotels range from Six Star to the local backpacker dormitories. And certainly 25 years ago, the skyline was very, very different to what it is now. If you wanted to stay in a four-star hotel, you had one choice and a five-star one choice. Now, I think at the last look, and I haven't been to Natrang for a couple of weeks, there are probably close to... 100, 150, four- and five-star hotels there. Um, not many of them full at the moment, so some great deals no. to be had. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Hey, just before I forget, tell us about the night diving. That that sounds intriguing. What it's, happens on a night dive? It's something which, after you've done it, you either love it or you're glad to have ticked the box. <laughs> I can Basically, imagine. Yeah, basically, you're diving, it's recommended the same site that you've been to in daylight, but of course, it's dark, so you're not going to see anything unless you have a pretty good um, light. So you're underwater with your underwater light, swimming around, looking at things. Now, people say, why do you want to dive at night? It's pretty much like Sydney in the, in the daytime. You're going to see a certain type of person doing certain things. And then as soon as it gets dark, you've got a totally different type of person out on the streets of Sydney doing different things. Exactly the same underwater. Hey, 
Have you got any great tips that people should think about before they book their their holiday? So, oh. you know, everybody's doing everything online. So just things that people should look out for. I'm going to put all your links in so people can deal with you directly. Mm-hmm. But just just questions that they need to ask themselves if they're coming as a family, uh, if they're coming as, you know, a couple or just, you know, solo travellers, just things that they should keep an eye out for while they're making decisions and trip planning. Yeah, I mean, the list would be extensive. As with any trip, it's it's being realistic. Um, with, with everybody having access to the internet these days, any question you want to ask, is the, the, the answer is available on the internet. And if you don't find the answer you want, you just keep asking the same question and then pick the answer you want. Um, yeah, <laughs> Personal feedback is invaluable. And as you say, you're going to put the links, and I'm happy to talk to anyone at any time about the country itself, about diving here, and also some of the surrounding Asian countries, which also have excellent diving. I've dived most of the Asian countries and quite a few of the other glamorous places around the world. But the personal contact, being able to actually email somebody who's there and say, hey, should I do this or what's a must-do thing? It helps a lot. And as I say, the the internet is wonderful, but you can find the answer you're looking for if you ask the question often enough. I agree totally. And I think that personal aspect is a big thing. And talking to somebody that you can trust, that you feel has got a lot of history in the place and, and reputation. And that's why I was glad to have you on because you have had that uh, experience and reputation. Uh, look, great to have you on. Won't take up any more of your time. Thank you again for your time and information. Uh, everyone that's listening, I'll be able to put uh, Jeremy's information in the episode notes. You can go to the website at What About vietnam.com and the page will be there devoted to this episode you can always reach out to me anytime and i will put you in contact with the right people Um, thanks again jeremy for being on the show okay Kerry, lovely to see you and uh, hope to meet up for a cold one in vietnam soon absolutely thank you for listening Check out the episode notes for more information. What about Vietnam? Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review and stay tuned for more fun adventures in Vietnam. What about Vietnam?